Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Voltus World, and today we're in Oro Preto, Brazil. And no, I'm not going to be talking about actually South America. I'm actually going to be talking about Europe, and specifically about more cities that have been impacted by over tourism in Europe. Recently, we put out a video about eight cities that were destroyed by over tourism. Bit dramatic in the title, I know, but how else do you get people to watch videos anymore? It's crazy. But the thing is, there are cities that are really impacted by over tourism. And the thing is, there is a difference between over tourism and just crowded at a certain time of year or a certain time of day. And I think that's something we need to make a difference of. Because what I'm trying to focus on are cities that are really being impacted, whether it's in transportation, whether it's accommodation, whether it's just the so many people I can't handle it or destroying the infrastructure. That's what I'm trying to focus on in these videos. And I know the irony of a travel vlogger talking about over tourism. Look, that's why we're here in Brazil. We want to show other places around the world that you can go because if crowds aren't your thing, come to Ouro Preto. It's a beautiful colonial city you can enjoy and just love about Brazil. Best food in Brazil as well. And that's the thing is there's a lot of places you can go around the world. And that's what I want to show here. Also, I'm in Brazil right now. I'm not in Europe. So that kind of impacts where I can film, right? But the thing is, what we try to do in our videos is educate travelers so they have a better idea what to expect when they go places, but also to help give them options, other places they could go if they don't want to go to over tourism places. So you can learn about places like here in Ouro Preto in Brazil, or if you want to go to Chile, or if you want to go to China, we have all kinds of stuff to kind of help educate you and give you options. That's what we're trying to do. But also we try to do is give people information so they can find a way that they can make an impact on individuals in different countries they go to because we as tourists really can help out communities. We can help individual owners of businesses. We can help out the local economies when we go because tourism is a vital part of economies in a lot of countries that are impacted by over tourism but places that aren't impacted as well because tourism really can help places like here in Oro Preto and therefore it makes it easier for you to make better use of your resources when you do travel. So let's get to the list. But I think if I look at cities that have been impacted, I know there's one city that a lot of people mentioned in the video in the comments. And also I've seen personally, for those who didn't know, I did my PhD. I'm a doctor. I'm actually a professor, Mark Walters. Um, I actually did my PhD in Brazil, in Lisbon. I lived there for five years. My youngest son was born there. And I've seen how this city has transformed from the early 2000s to the, the 2020s and how much more tourism has gone in there and how it has improved the economy. But now it's really become over touristed in terms of people can't get on the metro to get to work if they're downtown sometimes. Times. Accommodation. We used to live downtown. We lived there. We were a family, all this kind of stuff. Our friends all live downtown. They've all been priced out because the Airbnbs, the apartment rentals that are there, has made it unaffordable for normal Portuguese families. And so that over tourism's really kind of been alive. But I think the one thing that annoys everybody the most about the over tourism in Lisbon are all the tuk tuks. Now, the tourists love them because the hills there, it's like here in Oro Preto, lots of hills. And if you're a chunky traveler like me, you don't like hills. So those tuk tuks are nice but they clog up traffic as well. So that's why Lisbon really is on that list because it does get a bit much. That's why I'd say if you wanna go, don't go in the summertime, go in the shoulder season, off season, because Lisbon is great all, all year round, but sometimes it can just be overwhelmed with tourists, okay? If you wanna to go to some other Portuguese cities that are by there that maybe aren't as crowded, you know, you can still enjoy yourself. You can go to Evra and see the Bone Chapel there and the, the cathedral and the, the, the temple that's there. You can go to Tomar. I mean, there's places nearby that you can go to get that Portuguese feel without being overrun, okay? Now, Lisbon was the city that actually was the last one on my list in my first video, but it's the first one on this next one. And another city that almost made, if I would've done top 10 last time, is Florence, Italy, okay? Florence is so overrun with tourism that they're actually making laws against eating ice cream while you're walking down the street, sitting down and eating and have a picnic kind of stuff. Like they're, they're contemplating restrictions on the tourists because there's just so many tourists, they can't handle it. And that's one of the things. So if you're walking down the main strip and you know, you're going by the Duomo, you know, you're gonna go on the bridge, you know, with the, all the shops, on it it just gets so packed it's so overwhelmed and for the locals they can't enjoy the downtown either and so it can be a bit much and for a lot of tourists they're almost like i don't is it worth it to see david with all of these all these tourists there and for me all these places are still worth seeing even if it's over touristed but you might want to think about other times to go like florence it's beautiful all year round. If you can go during the week, or if you go, you know, in the fall or in the springtime, that will take out a lot of the tourists that are here. And that's one of those things you gotta think about. With these over-touristed places, some of them, their cities really survive on tourism. That would help them out, right? And so they need to have the tourism, but they kind of want to have it, hey, can we like kind of spark, like parse it out a little bit differently? So like they're not coming all in one month, it's coming over a few months time. 
And that's why I want to talk about Mykonos, Greece next on our list. Now Mykonos is an island in Greece that it's beautiful to go to and people go there. And this is one of those ones people feel that the Instagrammers ruined it because they took all their pictures and all this stuff and people want to get their Mykonos pictures there. Yes, that's why Santorini, Athens, and Mykonos, three over touristed places in Greece that you want to be aware of. And Mykonos itself is beautiful, but in the summertime it gets so overwhelmed. But in the wintertime, there's not a lot of services going on. So it's not as much fun to go there then. But you have to realize there's a lot of islands in Greece. It's not just Mykonos and Santorini. We were in Crete last summer when Mykonos and Santorini were having the biggest numbers ever, Athens ever. And we're talking to some of the people working in Crete. And they're like, yeah, outside of like in Hanyan, Heraklion, like there's nobody here. So you can go to other islands in Greece instead of Mykonos and get a great experience without the crowds all over you all the time and the waiting in line for an Instagrammer to take their picture. Now let's talk about a small town that was unfortunately made super famous uh, by a movie, okay? And that is Hallstatt, Austria. If you're not sure, Hallstatt, Austria is this beautiful like lakeside, you know, village in Austria. If you ever watched the old Rick Steves, um, you know, TV show, he actually has it in his intro there. But it was one of the things they based uh, the town from Frozen on. And so people are like, oh, and they finally realize just how gorgeous the place is, because it's gorgeous. But it is a tiny town, we're talking like, Maybe a couple of thousand people. I mean, it's a small town and so many tourists come in. I mean, at one time they put up a wall to block the view to stop the tourists from kind of overtaking the city. And it's an example of one of those towns. It's just a small town. It can't handle that number of tourists and they don't know what to do. They're trying to figure out ways to do it. So if you're thinking about that, maybe go to a city that can handle tourism more. Maybe go to, you know, Salzburg, which has a lot of tourists, but they can handle it. Innsbruck, Austria, which is fantastic as well. But just know there are these small towns. That's one thing I'd like you all to put in the comments. What are some small towns you see get overrun that just can't handle, but they have something really wonderful to visit? Because I feel bad putting these cities on the list because all these places on this list are fantastic to visit. Well worth going to, I've been to them. But I also feel for them, but I'm like, we have to think about this, right? Um, and that kind of goes into with like, Hallstatt gets, gets nailed because people come in for the day and just go. Another place is Toledo, Spain. And Toledo is probably one of the most popular day trips from Madrid, but it's also the, the Catholic capital of Spain. The capital is Madrid, but the Catholic capital is in, in Toledo. So it gets a lot of tourists. And I don't necessarily think it's over touristed itself, but I think it represents those over touristed place on the weekends. So when you're looking for day trips for places you're gonna go, if you're gonna be staying someplace for a week or so, don't do your day trip you know, on the weekend when everybody's going there, because that's when it gets overrun. Maybe go during the week so you have smaller crowds so then the, the city can kind of, or the town, the village can really take you in and kind of show you a better time. Because that's one of those things, these villages and these places, they survive on the tourism and it makes a difference for them, but sometimes it just gets a little too much. And kind of continuing on with our Spanish theme, I think Mallorca, Mallorca has been poppy forever. I remember I used to live in Germany like 20 years ago and they used to call it like the Siebsten to Bundesland, the 17th German state, because so many Germans retired there. So many Germans went there. But Mallorca, Mallorca, uh, Ibiza, you know, the Canary Islands, they're very much in the summer, they're overcrowded. Fall, spring, winter, no, they're, they're fine. I mean, yeah, there's tourists there, but it's not like the summer where everybody goes because it's beach resorts. I mean, it's like Florida in the summer in the US. Everybody goes down there because that's where you go for the beaches. And Mallorca is one of those things that really gets kind of overwhelmed with the number of party tourists. So if you are gonna go there, make sure you go and explore some of the cultural stuff as well, or maybe look at some of the other beach towns. You know, maybe not just go to the Costa del Sol, go to Costa Brava, go other places, go to the North Coast. Yeah, the water's a little chillier, but it's different and it's still fun. And the thing is, when we look at over tourism, it's not just about cities and towns. Sometimes it's about nature. And there's countries like Iceland. Iceland, Reykjavik itself sometimes does suffer from over tourism, especially in the summertime, but also the nature around there gets so much because most people just stay in the southwest corner by Reykjavik. You know, they'll go down and see the icebergs and they'll go to the Westman Islands and then they'll come back and they don't explore the entire other part of the island. Look, if you go and explore more, you really will be by yourself. Now, the driving on the uh, eastern part and the eastern fjords in Iceland, take my word for it, it is a little scary sometimes, but the thing is, it's beautiful and you get away from all the tourists and that's where you see Reykjavik just gets overwhelmed and, and that you know south west corner, it is one of those things you gotta think about. Cause you'll see with the over tourism in Iceland, there's one lane roads where literally tourists will run into each other cause they don't realize you have to wait for someone else to go. So that's another thing where the over tourism comes into a safety issue as well. You know, and if we look at over tourism, there's big cities as well. And like I say, big cities a lot of times have a better chance of kind of 
taking in the over tourism or where the over tourism is more of like just overcrowded. And I've got three cities that kind of fall in this category. One, Edinburgh and Scotland. Oh my God, it is so gorgeous. It is the best like tourist city to see in Scotland. Highly recommend it. But when you're there, you'll notice if you're on the Royal Mile, if you're walking around, you go to the vintage stores, go to the castle, wherever, there's always people around. It's always touristy. There's always people there because it's beautiful all year round. And so sometimes that gets a bit much for some people. And so that's why if you're in Edinburgh, that's where I'm going to say day trips can make a good idea for you or go and explore. Go to the Highlands. Go to the Isle of Skye. Go to Plogney outside the Isle of Skye. Go to Fort William. You can go explore because Scotland's really easy to drive around and explore on your own to get away from the over tourism in Edinburgh to kind of spread it out. But where Edinburgh is also suffering is in accommodation because so many of these like apartment rental things that, that people can get in a vacation rentals have taken away places for the locals to say so it's really driven up the price of accommodation kind of like in Dublin so that's a thing another city that I feel is a bit over touristed but no one ever talks about on their list is Munich and Munich Germany though it can handle tons of tourists because they have events there they have conventions they have Oktoberfest all kinds of stuff Munich sometimes can feel a bit overwhelmed just in the kind of main pedestrian street and when it when it comes to oh my god when it comes to watching the glockenspiel you really feel the entire world collapsing in on you with everyone there and it can be a bit much now is it super over touristed no but it's an overcrowded kind of thing that you might feel so that's why I say Munich's great but go explore more of Bavaria go up into Franca go to Bomberg you know go see that go to Nuremberg Regensburg there's all kinds of great day trips from Munich you can do to kind of get away from the crowds okay and then there's one of my favorite cities to go to and this is one that I, I don't know if I'd call it over tourism but I'd say it over bachelor partyism is uh, Prague and the Czech Republic and Prague on the weekends is full of people coming in for the great beer the great food and the great prices and it gets overwhelming. And the thing is, from the castle up on the hill, that walk down across Charles Bridge, which is gorgeous, to the old town square. I mean, it is the prettiest walk, well, honestly, probably the prettiest walk in Europe. And you understand why all those tourists are there, but it's always big groups coming through and big groups coming through. And it's one of those places that it's funny, if you walk like literally two blocks off that route, there's nobody there. Like prices drop incredibly for food and accommodation, all kinds of, just being a few blocks away from that main like walk over touristed way. And that's where I think when we talk about over tourism, sometimes it's just like parts of town that can't handle it versus the entire city. In Prague, they're doing a good job of kind of spreading, trying to get people to spread out more. So I got to give them that. But one of their, one of the faults of all these cities, it's not a fault, it's the fact that they, all these places are fantastic places to visit. So people want to go there, but they're trying to figure out how can we get it so we have the right amount of people. And that's one thing I'd like to think about. Let's have a discussion below, a civil discussion below to talk about tourism and how how is it you know we can do a better job of you know getting out there that's one thing is our videos we film all around the world literally hundreds of videos around central and south america caribbean all kinds of we got stuff from africa asia trying to spread people out to see more places around the world so if you have these cities that are over touristed what are your recommendations for other places to go to get that vibe you know because for prague if you're getting overwhelmed bratislava slovakia is a nice easier version of that with a lot less tourists and honestly people are just as cool but don't tell the czechs that so what cities did I leave out on my list of over tourism in Europe? Let us know in the comments below, but also let us know about other over touristed places around the world so we can help people know, hey, maybe I need to go visit another place to kind of spread the wealth out. Because that's one of the things we like to do is show these small towns and these smaller places like Oro Preto in Brazil to get tourist money to go to more parts of the world. So share your comments below. Keep it civil, people. We really appreciate all the input we've gotten from everybody. And we wish you all the best. I'll say bye from here in not overcrowded, but still over enjoyable. <laughs> Ouro Preto Brasil. Deus!